come back to class, but now we are the virtual class. So your semester has continued to run, so we have to move to this uh, system so that you don't miss much. So today I will take you to physics and I will first uh, revise the things we have done in all three majorly electrostatics so that I can help you. My uh, test are very from uh, Wednesday. So you don't need to write, it's already in your notes, all the things that the person will talk about, they have taught you and have some questions. So it's just to revise so that those things can come. When you hear them again, and when you view them, they come back to your brain. They will solve some questions, maybe here or later, on what's happening in our discussion. So, you know, I was trying to say right, but you're going to write. It's already on it. So, like I said, at the starting this week, Charges at rest. That's been of the goal. Electrostatics. Charges at rest. Combined also involve slow movement of charges. So it's not just going to be charges that are moving at all. But they are at rest. Personally, they also move at a very slow rate. There's no need for current. But when we talk of charges move very, very fast, then that becomes current electricity. That is electricity. So that will work too. And we also establish that there are two types of charges, positive and negative charges. The body is possibly charged if it has more positive charges. The body is not really charged if it has more negative charges. The body is neutral if it has equal amount of positive and negative charges. So I can put plus, I can put plus five, I can put minus five, and I say there is no charge because plus five minus five will give it zero. So this body is carrying charges, but then it is uncharged. So that's why we say the body is electrically neutral. So I gave you all these details. Then, from the basic law of our electrostatics, light charges repel, and light charges repel, and light charges attract. So that's the goal. But we need to use it as we go ahead. The other thing we discussed, we said charges can also be uh, conserved and quantized. So because charges on bodies are integral multiples of the basic electric charge, that means of being quantized. All right. Another thing we talked about. We also discussed the ways you can produce charges. The ways you can produce charges. Production of charges, if you remember. Production of charges. Production of charges, I also call it methods of electrification. Electrification. There are things in your note already. I gave you. Uh, two main methods. We have the charging by friction and we have the charging by induction. You remember uh, that class. These are two major ways of uh, producing charges. The question is also talk about what's talk about charging by contacts. That's not the very common. By friction, remember we said you can achieve a negative charge when you rub when you rub ebonite rod. Ebonite rod with with four, four that is air. If you rub a knife rod with four or air, you're going to achieve an electric charge on the rod. Every knife rod is anything that is plastic, plastic rod, pyroplastic, uh, and some of that. Your your comb can can serve as a knife rod. So if you rub it broadly with it, four, what happens? Electrons will move from the four to the ebony knife rod. So eventually the rod will electrically charge. So, for friction again, how do you achieve charging a body positively by friction? You can charge uh, a glass rod, glass rod with silk. Get your silk, get your clothes, rub it vigorously with a glass rod. After some time, the glass rod will acquire a positive charge. Why? That is how. Positive charges do not move from silk to glass. Don't forget that positive charges move. So, again, that. Uh, 
electrons we have to leave. Electrons we have to leave the plasma and go to the seed. So why electrons leave the plasma and go to the seed? Initially, the glass rod neutral because it has a core plus amine, but my electrons have gone to the seed, making it to have more of the positive. So that's what I would never say uh, positive charges, you know, only negative charges are allowed to move. So in that case, we have acquired, we have achieved that. So automatically, if I bring a glass rod that has been rubbed with seed, with carbon nitride that has been rubbed with four, both of them should attract each other. Because, like, remember the experiment we carried out by rubbing a uh, Classic road, the barrier with uh, uh, somebody's head class, and we saw uh, those heads that are not correct, the ones that no work, and the heads that are correct. <laughs> All right. So these are the ways of producing charges by friction. So we move to charging by induction. Remember, you know that's why to charge the body by induction, you need to understand the concept. Induction means charging the body simply by making a charge body near it. You are not actually touching, you are bringing it near, near it. The charge that you want to achieve on the body is the induced charge. The one I'm charging with is the discharge. The one you want to use to charge the body is the inducing, inducing charge. All these concepts that you know. Then don't forget that inducing and induced charges must be opposite charges. There is no way to be charged the body uh, possible by induction and you're inducing charge also for C numbers. That would bring uh, an opposite charge. So that is the concept of the status induction. Then we explain. So uh, charge the body uh, negatively for example by induction. To charge the body negatively by induction, I explain to you the uh, concept like Concept apply. For example, I want to charge this body negatively by induction. So it means initially it has minus, it has plus. One, two, three, four, five, six. So equal amount. So it means the body is neutral. So initially it is neutral because this two guys comes out. Now I want to achieve negative. What will I do? I'm going to bring a positive charge. Inducing rod. So this is inducing charge. Inducing charge. I bring in here it. So this guy will attract negative. Why the person repair away? So that's my step one. My step two is to now carry out editing. If I carry out editing, I must still put my positive rod in place so that it will be holding my negative guys. My negative guys. So once I do editing, once you see boy, remember I see what the editing. Once I do editing, editing. Can be carried out by the conductors. They will ensure that the charges you don't you don't need to move away to the earth. Positive charges cannot just move to the earth. Electrons will have to move from the earth to come and neutralize the positive charge. So eventually, I will not have any positive here. So this is sign of my earth. So this is my second step. My third step is to remove the inducing charge. Don't forget, the inducing charge is the Positive charge rod I have here. So if I remove the inducing charge, remove my negative charges can now distribute uniform around my initially on charge or neutral body. So I've, I've achieved charging the body uh, negatively by induction. So if I want to charge body positive by induction, I'll follow the same procedure, but I'm going to start with an opposite inducing charge. So once I put the negative guy here, it's going to attract the positive. Negative repair the way I do my etting. If negative repair the way, my etting is different, such that the electrons can go to the earth on their own without the electrons coming from the earth. So, eventually, I remove my uh, inducing charge, then I achieve positive. So, so, I'm sure that is clear. Already, you know, so I'm not starting to be fast. So, that's a revision class. One of the topics that I have not done, then you can be slow by the So, don't forget your topic has a lot of stories before we start talking about the formula. And you are writing a test online, so you can explain more of uh, uh, what the questions so, on this web. So, next thing we want to talk about is uh, we also discussed 
uh, electrophoros are important uh, devices, electrophoros components. Electrophoros is a device used to produce an unlimited number of charges. You want to get a very large amount of charge, the electrophoros can do that for you. So it also works on the concept of static induction, so it can be your MCQ. We also talk about the proof plane. The proof plane is a device used to transfer charges from one body to another. So we want to transfer a particular amount of charge from the body to maybe the electroscope or anybody you have to, you have to employ the proof plane. We also talk about the band graph. Band graph generator. Don't forget that. The band generator is a device used to continuously separate separate positive and negative charges so that you can build up build up a large PED potential device. This device is not the usual generator. It is made of to generate an IPD. So you can be used to power machines that require IPD like your X-ray 2. X-ray 2. Atomic bomb. Atomic bombardment machine. That's for me the function of the money graph and starting generator. So these are some devices that we also discussed. Then we also we also mentioned what is called the gold nibble electroscope. You remember the gold nibble electroscope? The gold electroscope is a device used to test for the presence and nature of charge of the body. You want to know if the body has charge, it can help you. You want to know the type of charge the body has, it will help you. So two things, for the presence and for the nature of the charge of the body. So what are the essential parts of the gold electroscope? Remember, I did the notes. So it has the tin on rod, it has a brass metal cap, that's a good lead. So this is a metal cap. This is a conduction rod. And this is a good lead. How does it work? So it has been established that the divergence of the gold lead will be used to confirm the nature of charge on the body. It's right in your notes. This vision. If there is a charge on gold leaf, if it's charge on body, the body that you are bringing, and this is the movement of the of the gold leaf, we observe that divergence is like a form of repulsion, while convergence is like a form of attraction. We are not doing convergence. I'm using divergence graph. Divergence increases, that is proportion. Divergence decreases, that is attraction. So that's the idea. So if at all the charge in the gold leaf has been known to be flux, and the one that you bring that you don't know, you know, let's assume that that one is now plus eventually. What would tell us that you already know this one, but this is already known. Because I know what is on the gold leaf. Then the one on the body is unknown. If after one of the body is positive, then you explain the divergence. Divergence is to increase because that's in portion. If the charge on the gold leaf electroscope is plus and you are observing something like divergence decreases, so by common sense, divergence decreases is a form of contraction or attraction. That means what you are bringing must be unlike minus. If the electroscope is minus and what you bring is minus, I'm sure you that divergence should divergence should increase. If the electroscope is minus and what you are doing is plus, then divergence should decrease. So that's the concept of the electroscope. I can give you MCP. Then uh, from there we uh, described electric feed lines. Don't forget. Electric feed lines. Lines. Every lines are imaginary lines, they are not there. What is imaginary? Imaginary.
much are your lines? Much are your lines used to represent the direction of direction and pattern of electric field around the charge of conductor. So very common in the For a positive body, you expect the, the uh, lines, the arrows to point it out. Out. For a negative body, you expect the arrows to point in. In. Negative. Don't forget, positive give out. Negative you see. That's enough to remember. If I have two, if I have two unlike charges, plus and minus, you expect their feed lines to relate. So, since there is attraction, so we expect the arrow to point from positive to negative. Then, on this side, I try to do correctly as well. It's going out, it's going out, it's going out. Here it's collecting, collecting. That's two unlike charges. For two like charges, like minus minus, you don't expect their feed lines to relate because unlike charges we like charges we we are repaired, so there will be point of utilization there. So I will never relate their feed lines. Both of them will be on their own. If I have my minus collecting, collecting, collecting. So it can never be continuous because both of them are doing the same thing. So they are the lines are not to relate, but they are doing the same thing. So I also gave you when we have a two parallel, two parallel unlike plates. They are parallel. I said this plus is minus. We expect the feed lines to move from plus to the minus. And there should be reasonably equal spacing between uh, the lines. If they are that, that's when they are parallel. If they are not parallel, they are not parallel, something like this. On parallel opposite plates, plus minus, we expect the feed lines to be out. To be out. Arrow moving from plus to minus. So this should be okay. This is the of us. So, we also look at the characteristics of electric field lines. Characteristics of electric field lines. Remember, electric field lines, the one, one that might lines, you cannot see them. They are just uh, applied to the uh, charge of conductor. So it's Number two, they originate from positive charges. Number three, they terminate on negative charges. Yeah. Number four, they must not cross or intersect each other. Yeah. Don't forget that. There's no way you draw it and make them cross here. I also told you number five, they, they, they originate normally from the surface of the charge on the So when they come out, it's also the, the line of the projection should be around 90 with the surface of the charge. Then the, the, a, a tangent that is drawn to the electric field line gives the direction of the electric field. So these are properties of electric field lines. They are all they are all in your they are all in your notes. So think from there we also talked about uh, three important concepts: the line charge density. Line charge density. Line charge density is a uh, is one that is the ratio of charge to the length of the conductor. The expected unit is coulombs per meter. Coulombs per meter. They talk about the surface charge density, which is like common as three. Surface charge density the sigma, which is the ratio of the point of charge to the surface area of the body. The expected unit is coulomb per meter squared. And the third one is volume charge density. Volume charge density, which is a gamma, that is charge over volume, 
they expect that unit is prolonged by the entire key. This second guy happens to be the most common or the most important calculations. Okay, so next thing to talk about the columns law. Remember, that's where the major calculation will start coming in. So we need to columns law. So already you know, remember columns law states that the force between two charges is proportional to the magnitude of the charges and the inverse proportional to the square of their distance apart. So from there, I have actually one sign, Q1, Q2 over R squared. From there, my constant comes in, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So you know what your K is? Don't forget your K. Your K remains 9 times 10 to the power, 9 times 10 to the power, 9. Newton meter squared, columns minus 2. You want to use your K, your K equals 1 over 4 by E naught. Anyhow, so where your E naught is, take my base by 10 bar by E naught squared, bar at bar meter. So, you see E that we employ in our capacitors. If you are given, uh, the three charges are assumed to be in vacuum. That's how we use E naught. If the charges are separated in the medium, it will give you a relative permittivity of that medium. So in that case, for a medium, the formula will change. Simply, then if you to 1 over 4 by E naught ER, you introduce the ER, then dot your remaining aspect Q1, Q2 over R squared. ER is common in your electro your capacitors and I'll give you so you say an hour. Remember again that your force can be by square law if the charges are constant, their force varies by the distance. That's in bar square law. We give you a word problem there if the, if the distance between two charges is doubled by common sense. You put that that double will be affected by the square, so two square making four. What's going to happen to the force? It's going to decrease by one quarter because it's inverse. So this one increases, this one will decrease by the square of the amount. So all those are problems. You can revise your uh, calculations and use the discuss calculations later at night. Then from there, we, we establish. Uh, Another concept which is electric electric potential. Remember, although we have the we first of all electric potential energy. The yeah, electric potential energy is worked on to bring it to charge to the line and electric field. So in that case, U is worked on. Simple. And work here. Is force and this one, we have to use our way. And our force in this topic remains k q1 q2 over r squared times r. So finally, we set our u because of k q1 q2 over r. The electric potential energy. So this kind of data will forget it. Formula. So from there, we move to electric potential. Electric potential. So don't mistake it without electric potential energy is measured in joules, it's energy. Where electric potential is measured in normal use of potential with volts. So electric potential is V, is the work done by unit charge. So simple. And the work is going to be negative work. We have negative charge from the point where it's not feeling the effect of the force of that field. To a point where it begins to feel the effect. So, what we're going to bring a charge from infinity to a point of concentration in the electric field. 
is called electric potential. And the work is done against that field outside of the you must put your mind. So, if there's a data like this, so, no problem. That's why the unit of the Joe Spark Law, which also quotes. If there's no data like this, then you go on. But this is basic formula. What normal basic formula is you can always work out the rest. So, minus work itself has established to be K, Q1, Q2 over R, then divided by Q1 minus 1 over Q. Of course, one of the charges you put to this is eventually your V minus minus K Q over R. There's no point putting Q1 again because there's only one Q. So minus K Q over R. So only one charge, only one distance. You know that that is your formula. There's work or potential energy or potential energy, whatever you call it. And they start that's a formula. Automatically, the work also becomes Q V or minus as case be. So this work is can come in your question as potential energy, can come as kinetic energy, don't waste your time. The same thing they are asking. And if you charge the electronic charge, if Q equals to B, then your work becomes E V. Very similar to what you have here. O4. We also established we also established uh, a concept of uh, electric field in fences. Electric field intensity, don't forget. Electric field intensity or electric field strength, or electric potential gradient, or electric flux density, four names. Electric field intensity, electric field strength, electric potential gradient. Electric flux density. Alright, so we'll look at the basis of all these things. So by definition, every density, the letter is your E is is is, is, is trying to tell us how strong, how powerful is that electric field. So it's the ratio of electric flux to the charge. I mean, so the force that the, the field is out over a test charge. You want, to, you want to test a charge in that field. So the force over the test charge tells us how strong is that field. So your, from this basic formula, it's going to be Newton's power law. Newton is very important, that can be a question. So Newton's power law, that's your E. What if we don't have this kind of data? Then go for that, your E becomes KQ1, Q2 over R squared, divided by Q, or that's all about Q. Naturally, Q goes away. We have only one Q left, so your E becomes KQ over R squared. The formula, they look alike, but they're not the same. This only one charge, only one charge. This distance is squared in that place. Here there is a square. So don't mistake all these guys with each other. And don't forget again that this guy is a scalar MC cube. What a question. This guy is a vector. All this can be your. I'm just going to describe how to solve vector, how to analyze vector for them. I think we did that in class. As IJK questions. So for now, that's the formula, there's no IJK in the ocean. Um, the standard mass for uh, vector notation. This is your formula. And uh, of course, your K again is one of our four values. Change your formula. Okay, there are some questions based on the data. You need to relate what we have done in your metrics with what we are doing now. How? From this expression there, from uh, E equals to F over Q. Remember, I'm asking my F equals to QB. Then remember your matrix of F equals to MA. So we can take it down to this case. So in that case, QB equals to MA. That's the power of data. QB equals to MA. And then, whatever is unknown will come out. Uh, what if the child is falling under gravity? If the of gravity, then A equals to G. In that case, QB equals to and G based on your data. Even from here, they can take you to your time or displacement. Just remember your basic mechanism formula. N is equal to half A T squared. For if charge starts from rest, B squared is B non squared plus 2 A S, wherever the case may be. Let's force it for now. 